Hey, and welcome back to the channel. This is Jude. Thanks so much for joining me in today's video. Uh, basically, going out into the wilderness to attempt a bow drill set in 10 to 12 inches of snow. Um, this is a very challenging thing to do, and so I thought it was a perfect opportunity to show you a trick that I learned from a good friend on how to make bow drill easier, especially if you're just trying to practice and hone your skills. If you remember, a few months ago I posted a photo of a collection of knives on my community tab that showed six different styles of knives, and some of you guessed what that was all about. What I was showing is a French trade style made popular by Dave Canterbury, um, a bush tool made popular by Morse Kahansky, a wood lore made popular by Ray Mears, you have a Kephart named after Horace Kephart, a Puko, very popular type of bushcrafting knife from Scandinavian countries, and finally a Nesmic style knife made popular by Nesmic. I wanted to compare all six of these knives at the same time, but that's a huge undertaking. So in this video and in future videos, I'm going to be comparing them in pairs, not to determine what's the best bushcraft knife or what's the best survival knife or whatever, but more to just show the highlights of each and the best parts of each. This is all personal preference. Uh, this is not a definitive guide or anything like that. So, you know, don't expect an, a final result of winners or anything like that. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Thanks for joining me, and let's get into the video. Easier if I wasn't holding this. Just as a show of hands, how many of you remember uh, Fell Woodcraft? You know, by Joe Mobley, Savage Citizen, that YouTube channel. This is the trick that I learned from him. He's a good friend of mine. He shared this technique with me, and I think he posted the video, honestly. Uh, but basically, you go to the hardware store, get yourself a nice piece of cedar wood, and use that to learn your technique on. It makes it very easy because it's dry, it's straight, you don't have to do a lot of carving, but it gives you all the fundamental knowledge in order to get everything straight in your mind. The rest, we'll take home, keep practicing. So this is the Scout Platoon BHK 01 Tool Steel Saber Grind. Nice big handle. It's uh, like a five and three quarter blade, five thirty seconds thick. Um, great big knife, big knife. Good for skinning, according to Dave Canterbury. <laughs> um, good for bushcraft. Also, according to Dave Canterbury, me personally, I think it's uh, I think it's pretty good. I think it's a good survival knife. I'm not always a huge fan of the shape because it puts your knuckles in line with the blade. I like it just a little further back from there. That's just my opinion. Other knife, you've seen this before: uh, black feather bush tool, welded pommel, a one tool steel, eighth inch thick, scanty grind. You know, what can be said, it's a good knife, it's a good bushcraft size, very comfortable in the hand with that slight swell right here. And that's the one riding on my hip. I'll take off a piece, make it roughly square. Nice and easy. BHK, Scout Platoon, let's do that same thing with the bush tool. It's very wet. Also very easy. Rule number one in the in the woods in the winter: don't wear jeans. Don't be stupid like me. Okay, so where we are so far, you can see this is the end that will go in the spindle. I mean the uh, bearing block. The spin. Now when it comes to a spindle, it does not have to be perfectly round. Having more edges and angles to grip, for the rope to grip, is better. The most important thing is that this tip, this point right here, and this point right here, 
are in line with each other so when it spins, it stays straight. Um, knife is a dream. Dream come true. Fantastic, feels amazing, can't complain. Joe Honeycutt knows what he's doing. Feels big, feels different. I'm not gonna carve this all the way down um, just because I don't need two spindles, but just to get a feel for it. I will say personally, having that longer blade makes it clunkier for me. Having a shorter blade like between that three, four and a half is way more agile for me personally. But because, like I said, the blade edge is closer in line with my knuckle, it feels unwieldy. It feels kind of like I'm rocking, rocking around. Still a good knife, just I wouldn't choose it for carving. I think it's just, you gotta remember that not all knives were designed specifically to carve wood. It's not how things work. So we got our spindle. Oh, I gotta get a bow. It's like a fallen branch over here. I think it'll be perfect. Alright, this was a dead branch. Looks like an a animal pushed up against it, but I think this, this one right here worked perfectly. Why aren't you chopping with your knife? Oh, because a knife isn't for that. I don't care how big it is. If it's a knife, it's a knife. If it's chopping, it's a machete. A little bit of flex in there, but I think we can make do. Now, generally speaking, we're talking about a bow length for, for bow drill, you only want about as long as your arm. So I'd want to cut it right about there. So I haven't used it as much. Just do some beaver chews up. Back. Good length. Get that piece bounced off too. Some people carve a bunch of little notches and stuff like that. All I'm going to do is carve it on either side, go straight down, and then if I'm cutting towards myself, I'm being dangerous. So I'm going to turn this around and Gently cut away from myself, not on my bedding. And again, this is why I like smaller blades. I'm more precise with them, I can be safer with them. Alright, now I've got a nice surface area to start actually bowing. There's going to be a strange setup because the snow is 10 to 12 inches deep. Brought some bank line. Brand new roll. Who is this? What does Greg Oven say? Always take a lighter. Because bearing blocks are important, obviously, and I don't have one on me, and I don't pack a bearing block, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the cat from my water bottle and hold it. Hopefully, so it doesn't burn me. Um, and I'm gonna hold it in one of these gloves.
Now, as of right now, all I'm doing is heating it up. I'm not worrying about like starting a fire. I'm not doing a lot of energy. I'm just heating up the material. All I want to do is burn it in a little bit. Cap's working okay. I think if I didn't have a glove, my hand would be pretty, pretty warm by now. Oh yeah, because I'm melting a hole in this plastic. Yeah, okay, it's starting to get hot now. <laughs> It melted through the plastic and burned my glove. See? It's not really doing what I want it to do. Now, there's a rule to how deep and how broad you make these notches. Quarter of the way into the hole, or into the divot, and then the same width as the divot. eventually. <laughs> so we're going to have to do this in a slightly different way, in a way I've never done before. With only downward pressure from my arm. So I got some good smoke going. If I had a coal, I just killed it. It's okay. I usually like to try to get the bow lower to the ground. Oh my gosh. See? 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 Oh, see. All right, well, the sun is going down. It's about to crest the hill. It's gonna get dark and cold. I gotta pack up and get out of here. This is actually getting to where it's slightly more dangerous. So we'll pick this up in the next episode. Well, it's always disappointing um, when, you know, I can't get a friction fire going, but, you know, the knives performed great. I thought the, uh, Bush tool was incredible at carving, super comfortable to work with. The, um, the Scout Platoon, I'm not a huge fan of it as a carving knife, but as a camp knife, yeah. I mean, how often when you're camping do you make a bow drill set to start your fire? Very, very few times have I done that. So, as a camp knife, both are great. As a true to life bushcraft knife, I put the bush tool on top. Yeah, it's cold. It's amazing how quickly the temperature dropped. It went from like, oh, I'm in the t-shirt. It's like 35, 40 degrees to, oh no, it's like 20 degrees. So I'm pretty cold. I'm gonna get out of here. Okay, here's the plan. Next time I will bring different knives from that list, from the group of, of six knives so that we can test those out uh, instead of these two. Hope that answer some questions about you know which style knife is better for bushcraft i know it did for me um, in any case thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one take care